Hello, my friends. I'm Rick, and this is your Seat at the Table. And little Missy sitting here next to me on the floor. And we will pop this up here for a minute and throw that over there because everybody wants to see my ugly mug this early on a Sunday morning. It is Sunday, uh, getting on to the latter part of the month here of April. Yeah, yeah, April, May. Yeah, it's April, right? It's been a bruja the past six, eight weeks. And I've bitched about it, I'm sure. So this is going to turn in one of them sessions. Before we get to that, before we get to the gripes part. Uh, first off, I appreciate the subscriber that sent me this. Uh, I'm drawing a blank off the top of my head exactly the person's call name, but we're going to keep his address a bit uh, uh, on the down low. So somewhere in Ontario, right? Gotta love you Canadians, man. You guys are the, you guys are the greatest. So, you, you know, I got this uh, in my post office box Friday, and I, I don't know when it was actually delivered. Uh, my post office box is at, in a town 20 miles east of, of where I live. Uh, that's where I, my hometown, uh, where I grew up. And uh, I've had that post office box out there since I was a kid. I mean, I got it when I was uh, 16, I think. 16 so I got it 1983 ish right and, and uh, after my folks passed away you know we sold my, my mom's house and and uh, the wife worked out there for 20 years we lived out there for many years and and then of course I grew up in that town and uh, well, so we still have our bank out there and we still uh, go to the post office but we only go tw on average about twice a month these days uh, so anyhow, the the fine the fine gentleman sent me a very extensive uh, PDF library here of uh, BattleTech material. Right, it's one of the reasons I, I don't want to fire off no names and stuff because I'm not trying to get nobody in trouble or hung up or any you know misunderstandings because I don't know the source material for some of this stuff, and some of this stuff I know. For a fact, through conversations, has access uh, has has access to other source material who has direct access to the to the well, and so we want to be you know very circumventive about it. But we also want to acknowledge that it's just for the love of the hobby. We're not trying to do anything shady or anything like that. Uh, so I have yet to unpack everything that's in here. There is a lot. Now this is, uh, I, I've had a previous uh, uh, individual give me a very extensive PDF uh, uh, library as well. And so a lot of the stuff, which majority of the uh, PDFs and stuff that I've, I've been reviewing and, and going through, I would never have had the money to buy myself. And that's just being honest. And there's a huge section of this stuff that came and went during that 20 year hiatus that I had, which is, you know, bothers me a lot the more than I want to acknowledge. So, truth is, if I just stuck it out, I probably would have owned most of this crap anyway. Uh, so, the PDF versions of these things makes it so I can actually access something physically that I have never had the opportunity to do and read through it and it helps me fill in missing links in the lore for Battletech and also the missing evolutions of the mechanics for the system. Uh, as mechanics go, mechanical systems for the combat and things like this, and I'm talking the tabletop wargame version, there's very little actual major change. The The core concepts are pretty basic, and that holds true in just, just about every tabletop war game that exists. Uh, and I, I can get, I've got a, bo a, bo I know, a pile of Avalon Hill uh, uh, war games from way back in the day. I've done some videos on my channel on a couple of them. I'm just saying, uh, you know, the mechanics, they're, they're not complicated. I'm, they're just not complicated. Uh, they come enhanced. So you get the crunchy rules, which is what occurs over time. So we get the early versions, which is when they're just trying to get a system on the table that functions. And even the, the creators acknowledge it's not the end all to beat all. And then so over evolution, as you know, things will change. Well, from the basic mechanic system that the Battletech uh, Wargaming system uses, the function pretty much has remained consistent all the way across. There hasn't been any really radical control changes or name changes because that's something a lot of places want to do. Uh, and I'll use an example that my own uh, my own would be game, uh, Interstellar Frontiers. The um, mechs 
are quite common in to the sci-fi genre today far more common now than they were 30 years ago or 20 years ago and uh, so when I started creating my game system about, some, about 20 odd years ago I mean it, it was uh, uh, one of those things where I wanted to be careful because being a very advent uh, fan of Battletech uh, was not a fan of you know I, I, I watched a lot of Gundam stuff but I didn't wasn't a big fan of the Robotech franchise but you know and I never got into the Warhammer 40 40k franchise at all but the same idea is the mechanics are quite similar from all those game systems now the nuances in them is what sets them apart and that's what makes it the makes or breaks the game so I chose to use knights instead of mechs as a terminology for my mecha so if for example i'm getting ready to do a video uh, to come out for my uh, would-be channel that uh, on the agronite that my uh, house had acquired uh, through through you know uh, just confiscating stolen goods and we're going to plug them into my agri concern i'll show you how that how that work how we work that and uh, so these are mechs they're agricultural mechs, agri-mex, but I choose to call them a knight because I, I, you know, I'm just trying to do something a hair different from everybody else, and and it still comes off sometimes as forced. You know, things don't roll off. You know, uh, we're so used to using the term mech uh, that it rolls off the tongue, and you don't give it a whole lot of. It's not something you stumble over where you might when you're trying to learn a new lexicon so the same thing so this individual and and god bless you man i'm serious there, there's a lot of stuff in here more importantly the the stuff that that's in here that i don't have and i, I found about a dozen right off the bat that i know i don't have and uh the novels there's a lot of novel pdfs in here on novels and uh my only gripe with pdfs in my lifetime is uh, I would have to take my laptop with me to work with its limited lifespan battery to try to read anything while I'm at work and going to my personal life rants if you listen to me cripe and bitch him enough you'll know what I'm saying when I say that uh, uh, I work an insane amount of hours I finished up last week yesterday morning about 3 30 in the morning so i had uh 50 just just a, just short of 58 hours 58 hours in five days five days and uh so i worked 14 and a half hours on thursday i drove all over the state of iowa and did several jobs that were out of town <clears throat> and then ended up back in town, finished another job. And I went out Friday morning, and I did a local restaurant. It was two trips. It took about four hours to do it. And so I went out about 6.30, was back to the shop by, by 11, went and, went and grabbed Bren and the van, and we went, uh, and it's Friday, so we ran out to town, went out to Mitchellville to the post office box, and that's where this, this beautiful that little envelope was sitting waiting for us. And uh, then, of course, we're in our errands, from grocery, groceries, paid bills, etc. Everything everybody else does is too. We get home about three hours later. Everything we're going to pay and can pay has been paid. Uh, that leaves us a whole thirty thirty seven dollars left. I had an eight hundred dollar check, seven hundred ninety nine dollar take home. That's because I had some overtime the previous week, and so I'm hoping for Fridays coming coming up to be a grand and be about a thousand bucks. And uh, that will allow us to uh, uh, get a jump on next month's bills a little bit. But more important, it'll allow me to take uh, Bren to, to Walmart. We don't go to Walmart very much anymore. We use the time we used to go to Walmart every week. But between some of the, 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 I don't know, social changes at Walmart, you know, I, I, this, you feel like you're a criminal. And I don't care what their argument and their reasonings are, and I understand their reasonings are for checking people's receipts and crap at the doors, but guess what? It still makes you feel like a fucking criminal. I don't like that feeling. And I like even less the self-checkout that's become the, the thing 
at most retail and, and chain locations. I don't care what grocery store or where you, you know where you buy your sundries at. Uh, you know what I'm talking about. So we went from a place where we had a dozen cashiers that made good paying, you know, for for a, can, you know retail jobs, cashier jobs were some of the best paying, especially in places like WalMarts and and and, uh, and grocery stores back in the 80s, 90s. Well, that's changed considerably, and this this uh, this this self checkout bullshit is it really any more convenient for you than if you was standing in line waiting for a human being to to check your stuff out? Is it, or is it just convenient for the corporations to save money by not having as many good paying positions? Meanwhile, you have well, I have fewer cashiers. Yeah, you have one or two attendants that you can never find. Majority of the time, you can't find them because they're off helping somebody else or can nowhere to be seen, anywhere to be seen at all. And then what do you get? You you got problems with things you you're scanning in. The damn things aren't enough space for your what you know. You come in with a grocery cart and a half full of stuff and their damn little aisles aren't big enough to handle it meanwhile you got to bring in some things that require an id check like i don't know you're buying some beer or a bottle of wine or something and you gotta you know then you got you're back to hunting down the damn clerk to come over and give you your approval and and then it just no it's not convenient it's bullshit See, that's how, and I got to be careful because I can run off on the tangents and stuff. So, like I said, uh, it's been a pretty rough last month and a half. I, I, there was an entire week in March I did not get paid, and uh, we are still paying for that now. Uh, we just, I, uh, uh, yesterday, the, or the day before, the wife's uh, uh, bank account w went into the black, uh, red. It, it, over, it, overdrew, it got overdrawn, uh, and we ended up having, it took me $75 to get it back over and leave a little bit of a padding there for the next go around. So when Friday comes, I'm gonna put another $50 into, into the checking. Uh, her, her checking account gets used just a few times a month. Uh, she's on disability, 20 years working for Casey's, a local convenience store company, uh, but her epilepsy got out of control. I've, I've said that many times before. So she, she's earned her disability. She's earned the right. She hates every minute of it, she really does. Uh, and she's never been able to drive anyway because of her epilepsy, so that makes it worse. She's isolated. She spends most of her time here by, her, by herself with all these cats. And I'm gone a lot. Even when I work, you know, I can have an eight-hour day, but it might take 12 hours to get that eight hours. I might work four in the morning and four in the afternoon and come home for three hours or something like that. And, and, I, and I do that as often as I can, but it doesn't, you know, every week's a different challenge. So, I mean, this current week, it's another one of these 50 plus hour weeks and the boss's wife will cry because, you know, anything, anything over 44 and she starts crying because it costs them money. It's overtime. But the jobs didn't go anywhere. They have to be done. And it's so like the one I got to do tonight. It's, uh, you know, it's a doozy of a job. It takes most of the night to do it. So even, and I have to, even starting before the restaurant closes, I'm still out there at five or six o'clock in the morning. So I'm going to go out at eight o'clock this evening and I work on a Pancheros all night long. And then tomorrow I will be like I was all day yesterday and still am now, just tired as groggy as fuck. Excuse my French. I'm groggy and I'm tired. You know, I'm uh, bone tired. I, you know, if I had to do any, I don't really want to do videos today neither. I didn't want to do them last week. I was so damn tired. But I, since I didn't do them, I got to do them because I need to have something on the queue so I can put stuff in there for you guys to listen to me bitch and cry. You know, and I feel obligated. I, I, try, I take this channel as seriously as I can, as little, you know, as much as I can do to keep it moving. I try, right? And that's that's part of it. So anyway, like I said, uh, back on this this feller sent me some a lot of novels. Uh, one of the things that tripped me was uh, the he, they got him by, by categories list, and he's got like 15 dark age novels. And in my head, I thought there was a lot more of those. Either that, that's all he has, which is fine. Because uh, I, I remember I've had about eight or nine of the books. Uh, I still have a couple floating around out here on my shelf. But I, at one time, I had five or six more that I ended up donating to a library because of space considerations. That I, at the time, I had to, I had to do something with the uh, had too much stuff for my situation. Hmm. So I donated. I tend to buy books, read them, and donate them to the local library because. I, 
I, I couldn't get the book at the library. Now the library's got the damn book for somebody else, maybe. Anyway, uh, it, so I, I've never owned a uh, an iPad of any form in my lifetime. Uh, I've had computers since the early 90s, so I'm familiar with them and attached to them just like most you know techno nuts are today. Uh, the cell phone, as in the entity that you use and take you know, take, uh, you know, uh, take, uh, uh, well, not take, not take advantage of the name of the well, Anyway, uh, I didn't get an actual cell phone until the late 90s. My first kind of modern t cell phone came about in the late, or the early 2000s. And I've always had cheapos ever since, in part because the jobs I've had uh, are quite destructive. The The current phone I have is only a year old. It's probably a third generation Android by today's standards. Probably was the popular thing three or four years ago and they, they make so many of them that this is how we end up with these cheaper burner phones is because they're over, they're what's left over of two generations back that nobody wanted to buy. So now we're buying them at a much reduced rate or you know, price. So it, it's functionable. But it has it don't have as much storage capacity, for example, and I don't have the money to pay for extra external cloud. This bullshit, I, I can't. I mean, it's like the stupid Norton uh, uh, software that I got for protecting my laptop that fucking bogarts a hundred dollars every damn year out of my damn wallet, uh, and it sits there all the time sending me these little messages. I need to do this and I need to do that, and this is broken, and and we can fix this all from price, all for money. Oh, we'll fix this, but you you got to pay up. Uh, you want that, and you'll have to have a, a mo another monthly subscription in addition to the yearly fucking thing. And now I have to have another thing. No, I, I can't do it. And if you're not caught, you know, if you're not careful, those little things add up in a fucking hurry, in a real hurry. So anyway, back back around Christmas time, um, the wife. Uh, asked me what I wanted, and I had no idea. And we so we were ordered through uh, Swiss Colony. It's a gift place where you get, you know, like the uh, the old uh, uh, oh jeez, I can't think of the uh, Hickory Farms, where you'd order the big meat and cheese platters and and candy platters and bowls and things like that. So you can get that through these. They also sell other Chotskys, and one of them was this uh, about $140. So this is my first. Uh, you know, <laughs> tablet. It, it, so it's definitely much, much larger. My regular phone would sit right here in the middle of the screen, but the things that come with it, the, yeah, see, I'm trying to get it turned on. Uh, it is a Next, a Nexa, N A X A, powered by Android. So it should function like my phone. It wasn't until a few weeks ago that I actually got it to work. I mean, I got it to turn on, but I couldn't get it to hook up to my my wireless internet in my house, which is the only way to communicate with it to set it up. Uh, in part because I did not could not remember for the life of me what the hell my password was for the MediaCom that we had. So when we got rid of MediaCom in March and, and moved to the Verizon home doohickey, uh, they give us a new set of codes, and I didn't even have to enter the code. This thing on immediately dialed in with the the Verizon thing, and bang, it it started talking to it, talking to itself. So my next step is just to figure out, you know, how to get the See, I don't even know how to keep the stupid thing on and stuff. I don't know how to get that. Uh, is to figure out how to download PDF files to it. And once I can do that, and then I can take this thing with me uh, on my job at night while I'm sitting in the truck and catch up on some of these things. And I'm really looking forward to it because there's a, there's a number of novels there that and short stories that I, I've never read before. And I'm, um, hey, Man, how awesome. And I, I don't know what other source book material, game material, PDFs. I know there's at least one PDF in here, or uh, uh, what looked like a, uh, a TRL, 
Uh, there's at least one TRO in here that I don't think uh, I have on my shelf in any form. And uh, I'm looking forward to getting into that one a little bit more because, you know, I, as you know, channel, I love those things. I don't care if it's a legitimate uh, corporate made or if it's a fan, a fanfic made, uh, uh, you know, it's all great. Anyway, one last thing, right? One last thing. You know, I like to say that. One last thing. That's what I'm missing, right? So here's how it went. The water pump went out the first weekend of March. Took it to the mechanic. So I was down for three days while they worked on it. They call us that Monday morning when the truck was supposed to be done and tell us we got a bigger problem. We had to take it to the international dealership. So we took it to the dealer uh, uh, out in uh, uh, Altoona, Iowa, which is near Adventureland. They called back and they started to explain something called blow by. I had never heard of in my entire lifetime what the hell this was, but it's the amount of oil that gets past the rings in your motor. And in a diesel commercial engine, if it gets past 7%, the engine's failing. And at that point, it's just a race to see how long before you burn the entire motor up. So we had a 6.4%, which is pretty bad. And their, their estimates was it was almost, almost critical. So the truck was down for two weeks. It was during that two week stretch that I uh, suddenly developed an infection in my foot, which was weird. It came, I mean, I'd had it been gimping around for a couple of months. It just finally, you know, became a problem. So it took about 10 days to get that all cleaned up and cleared out. Meanwhile, the truck was down for two weeks anyway, but it was still as sure as a pain in the ass. Put me back a hundred plus hours. I had over a hundred hours in customers at this point that were piled up and, and many of them you know, are already complaining. You know, they're calling because you know, it, we go every three months somewhere, it's, there may not be a big deal, but if you go to a place they want you there every week or every two weeks and you miss one, then that's a problem because what's going on on their end, there's a reason why they have you come as often as they do because it's expensive to do what we do. You know, it cost them a hundred bucks every time I walk through the, you know, walk through that back door and drag in a hose. So, you know, if they're paying us to be there every week and we're not, that's because their kitchen needs us to be there and they're now suffering issue. So we get the truck back and I drove it for a week pretty hard. I put in a pretty hard week and then I went the next, the following, uh, no, that the end of the week, that Friday, uh, the hose starts popping. So we have a, a, a hose that breaks three different times. And they send a mechanic, send a truck out, and a guy works on it. He gets the hose, the, it's just a little piece of hose about six, eight inches long, part of the coolant system, but it's a deuce to get in and out. And so he gets it in, and it's all good. And I drive from the east side of Des Moines to the north Mixmaster on the interstate where 30, I-35 and I-80 mix together. And that's just up the road from, from where I'm living, right here. So, I get up to the Mixmaster, and the hose blows again. So, I'm shut down right there on the Mixmaster. It's a very, not a very good place to be broken out. So, I called the mechanics up, and their, man, their guy came out, and he screwed with it for, for better part of a half hour. And then he just says, look, I'm, we're going to have to take this thing back to the shop. So, we had to pay for a tow truck to haul our truck to their shop. And then they fixed the hose, supposedly. They even drove the truck back to our shop and dropped it off in our parking lot. That way I would have it first thing the next morning. So I came in that, that bright and early Monday morning, first thing Monday morning to go to my first job. And I fire the truck up and I walk into, because you want to let it run to let the oil warm up and crap. So I walk into the office to get some paperwork, 10 minutes maybe 10 minutes turn around I walk back out and I can smell the antifreeze and I look and it's just gushing out from under the truck so I took a video of it on the phone and I called the, my boss and the mechanic and the mechanic's boss is like well our guy this that and the other thing and I says I understand that their guy but here's a video of that thing right now I'm dumping antifreeze all over our driveway I can't go anywhere with that as a problem so they had to send their guy back yet a fourth time and he worked on it for a couple hours and got it fixed and, and supposedly was holding. And it did for a better part of a week. So I ran out the rest of that week and ran my ass off. And then we're coming up on the end of 
the end of March, right? So we're like then few few three weeks back when the water pump, <coughs> not the water pump, excuse me, but I'm on a going out on a Friday evening to do some extra jobs that we that are on my list of places that I absolutely have to get done. <coughs> and it's in a small town about about 15 miles northwest of here. And I get it way up there, just outside of Hoke City, and bang, the antifreeze, they start dumping antifreeze everywhere, and the lights are all on. So I pull over, and I, and I just, I'm about fit to be tied. And so I couldn't see where it's coming out of. So I called the shop and the mechanics and blah, blah, blah. So they sent a fella out, and it was 7, 8 o'clock on a Friday evening. So, it, you know, it was a busy day, or busy time, and uh, I was already into some overtime and cheesed off because this, this screws in my damn day. And I wasn't fixing to be out all night if I could help it. I don't really like working all nights on Fridays. I don't. I like having Friday nights and Saturdays off. I, Sunday evenings is uh, Sunday nights, you know, but... No, no, no. If I'm working a Friday night, it's because I'm hard up for the hours or there's jobs that absolutely have to get there. We have to get them caught up. So in this case, you know, I'm up here to go two jobs. Didn't get either one of them done. Mm. So the guy comes out and it's shooting water out of the radiator. So that's what he says. The radiator's blown. Well, geez, that's like $900,000 just for the radiator. Another yet another tow tow bill. I think that's been the third or fourth tow bill in, in the you know in that month of March, and that's like six five six hundred bucks a pop. You have your car towed, it's a hundred dollars. Have a diesel commercial truck haul haul your shit. That's like five hundred bucks, and that's local, right? So if you're out of town, it can be a lot more. It can get you can get into the grand and plus range because I've been there. So uh, I had to have it towed. And since it's Friday night, I just said I'm done. Call me Monday. Let me know Monday. So I called him Monday. I hadn't heard nothing from anybody. And they said, I called him Monday. Oh, it wasn't the radiator. It was a hose that goes between the radiator and something else. See, these this truck's got like 50 different tiny little hoses all over it. And one by one, and they're failing. And, and so it had rotted out and stuff. So they got it fixed, which is a cheaper repair than the uh, than the radiator, but they still would have had to have it in the shop because it would they had to pull the radiator out. It was still a thing, right? Anyway, so they got it uh, picked it up Monday morning, and uh, went out and did a bunch of work. And actually, I did one no two jobs. Then I went back to the office and did some paperwork, and then I went back out in the afternoon to do my first job. Uh, of the day uh, as far as I was concerned the first real job of the day and I get there and I'm watching underneath the truck since all this crap started I'm keeping an eye out for things like leaks I want to if it's leaking we I want them to tell me why it's, you know all this money my boss has shelled out that should not leak and lo and behold I'm doing this uh, this nursing homes interceptor and I start noticing oil dripping down I'm like what the f what the f and it's dripping down. It's also getting up onto the something underneath dripping because it's getting in something hot. Because I got acrid smelling, smoky looking stuff coming up through the boot around the edge of the boot for the stick in the truck. So I'm looking at this shit's dripping, and the, the whole PTO box, gearbox is all, all covered in uh, oil. So I took video of it and called my boss and called the mechanic. Now, eight, nine months ago, we had that manual transmission. Uh, re rebuilt. The whole transmission was re replaced with a rebuilt transmission because, like the motor, it had run at six. You know, it's only got about 150,000 miles on it before it's you know before it starts to have problems, and that's because that's what they say. That's just how the manufacturer says they're set up. And uh, anyway, the uh, so they had worked on that. It was like five, uh, almost 10, 12 grand. Uh, I think it was all total. It was just short of twelve thousand dollars. So between that and the 32 that we already had to put in the truck in the pa over the past month, we've down there paid for this truck again. They paid 50 grand for it three years ago, and now we've got 40 plus in it. So we've, we've rebuilt the mechanics on the damn truck. It it better good better be good for another three to five for God's sake. Or you know, it, it's hard. It was hard for the boss to come up with the money for this shit. They did. That or go you know be out of business kind of crap. He manages he manages to find a way, but uh, yeah, you know. So this transmission, it wasn't, turns out, it wasn't the PTO shaft because we'd had that replaced when we had the transmission replaced, you know, it just kind of went par for pair. So got a whole new uh, setup. 
and uh, it should not be leaking oil. And these are self-contained units, so you don't add oil as needed. You know, it's not like your dip, you know, not like a dipstick you can pull out and drop some oil down in there. These things are sealed up. So if they're leaking, that oil's important, and it's not going to be there, then it's going to cause a much thing to much wear out much faster, and then it ought to. So we had to take it back to the mechanic, and the mechanic gets, the, the head guy gets there, and he climbs up under, and he comes back and he says, yeah, it's not the PTO, it's the something, something above it. So the stick shift for the manual transmission in the truck goes to the floor, and beneath the floor there's some kind of gearbox or stack or something that the shifts bolt to, and that in turn bolts to the top of the transmission and into the gears arrangement in the transmission. So that stack thing was what was leaking transmission fluid. And we're back to that full circle. This is a manual transmission, so you don't have a receptacle where you can just add more oil to it. I've never found one, and nobody's ever nobody's been able to point one out to me. And when I pointed that out to the mechanic recently, he said, "Well, that's because they don't have it." That means if you start losing your 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 oil and your transmission fluids and stuff, you got a bigger problem because you'll burn your transmission up. So they had to fix that, and it was down for a better part of a day. I got the truck back the next damn day. But that's been the, the litany for the past seven weeks. Now, this I just finished this past week, you know, not a problem. I got a lot done. And most of the week before that, I got a lot done. And this coming up the next, next week or two. Next two weeks are going to be pretty big, busy. And I'm hoping for the things that needs to slow off. I need to have a, a three-day weekend pretty soon. Uh, if, because if nothing else, I, I would say I just a loaf around. But that ain't it because, uh, you know, uh, I've got to get my garden ready. I've got uh, projects outside that may, need to be done. And they're best done in the spring when it's nice and cool and not humid as all F. You know, and the garden part, you, you got to have it in by the mid mid uh, May if you want them to be, you know, having decent vegetables by July kind of thing. Uh, there's stuff I want to get done there, but we we got to do the stuff with the job and, and with the work, and uh, some of it's just wearing on me. It just really is. So I mean, it's like once again, this coming Friday, I have a job, except this one will be just in the evening. Uh, it's still one I utterly hate doing. It's a it's a grocery store in a small town called Pella, and it has four grease traps, and they're spread throughout the building, and they're huge, and they're a pain in the ass. That and they all have nuts instead of bolts. So somebody took the bolts and stuck them in upside down, and so sometimes it throw 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 the throw a dice because. I don't even bother bringing the hoses in anymore until I get all the nuts off. So I bring my impactor and in and take them all out. If I can get them all out, and the lid comes up. But it seems like one out of four, every time I show up, I can't get open. And then the next time I come, it'll be a different one, and I'll get the first, you know. But it's the idea. And, and our predecessor, that's the reason they stopped servicing that place. And now I understand why. It's such a pain in the ass. And they want us to do this, this, this. And finally, I told them, I said, no, I'm not doing any of that no more. And here's why, you know. Meanwhile, if you expect me to do that, I'm going to make damn sure I have a helper with me, and we're doubling what we charge you because... You're asking for a lot, you know, they're asking for a whole lot of unnecessary BS that wouldn't be something, it would something that their, their layout is flawed and it's not my problem. You know, the big bitching about the smell, well, when you got these four foot metal lids that sit on these boxes and you place them in the floor right in front of all your sinks where your people are standing on them all day and moving up and down, yeah, they wear out. You wear the damn seals out, they stop sealing. And once that happens, the metal starts to rust and corrode, and I, I, I don't give a shit. I, I don't care how much caulking you think I can put in there. It doesn't hold. And then they cry. You know? And then the, one of the ways to fix that is they put these really thick-ass plastic mats. So they got these mats they are like an inch thick, and they're heavy, heavy stuff. They're damn near too hard to pull and move. And then they stick to the floor, too. And everything underneath them is slimy from the water because they don't mop under them. They just mop around them. 
which I keep telling them, I says, you guys have got your bakery and your your, your meat department. Them are f nasty freaking Petri dishes and God knows what under there. Your people need to be picking these mats up once a week and flipping them over and drying them off and drying the floor under there. But anyway. It's one of those jobs that I, it's in my top five hated, and I think it's number one or two right now. And, and uh, so it has a habit of being pushed back and pushed back because I hate going. I really do. I hate going there. And uh, I was promised to have a helper uh, from here on out to do that one, but getting that, having a promise and getting a helper signed, you uh, know, is a different different kind of thing and sometimes it's uh, much too much bullshit and and then there's dealing with the other person I just want to go and get the damn job done and get it over with so it's done and I can ignore it for another three months right that's kind of where I'm at this point so if I can't get help to go with me fr uh, Friday I'm just gonna go do it but at least I'll be home by 11 o'clock and not freaking four in the morning shit because I don't feel like I had a I don't think, if it's what, you had a weekend off. Did I really have a weekend off? If I worked, if I worked until 3.30 Saturday morning, so I worked on Saturday, midnight to 3 a.m., 3.30, and including the six hours, because like, you know, I went to work at 6 p.m., you know, so, and didn't get any nap in, so I was dragging ass all night. And so I come home, and I get, four or five hours sleep and I get up and we got stuff to do. I go out and I mow, my sister comes over. Uh, I planned on doing some videos yesterday, but my sister came over and I kind of put it, at that point I was too tired to care. We didn't get a nap in. Uh, we, we stayed up, we stay up a little late. So one night a week, we stay up, watch TV and do other stuff. Uh, so it was after midnight, the time we got to bed, about eight o'clock this morning, we got back out of bed. Uh, but I'm still tired as I'll get out because I'm short on the sleep from the day before and get no sleep at all and so I worked Saturday night or early early Saturday morning and now here it is Sunday the next day and I'm going to go to work at 8 o'clock tonight so four hours of Sunday and there, you know seven seven odd hours tomorrow so from 8 o'clock this evening to probably 6.30 7 o'clock in the morning tonight and so that means I will have worked Saturday Sunday night and Saturday morning, so I didn't get an actual day off. Yeah, I got a gap in between, but it wasn't a real full full 24-hour window, let alone a full 48-hour window of normal sleep pattern, because I, you know, I'm lacking an hour of sleep in there, or a, a whole night's sleep. And then, uh, so then tomorrow, on you know, Monday, I mean, shit, it's, it's already Sunday, and I don't feel like Sunday. I mean, I just, I'm still recovering from Friday, and here it is, another work day already. So, uh, I'm going to do videos, and I'm going to take a plastic nap, and then bake supper, and then go out and work. And so most of my Sunday shot, right? Uh, it, and then and then tomorrow, that'll be Monday, uh, I didn't schedule any jobs in the evening. Because it's real hard to come off of these kind of weekends. I am going to be literally dead to my feet tomorrow. I don't care how much sleep I get in the morning. And then my wife and I both have dentist appointments at 2 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. So we can get up, you know, around noon or so and then go to the dentist, get those taken care of. And then we got to run to the grocery store out. We go to a town that's outside, Altoona, which is a suburb of east of Des Moines. And the place where we used to do most of our heavy shopping when we lived in Mitchellville anyway, because we'd come to Altoona either way. So we still go to Altoona because we're familiar with the stores. Those are our stores. We've been going there for decades, and that's kind of hard to break. Hard to break. You know the people. You know the layouts. It matters. It makes your life simpler. You know, you're not stumbling around in some place you've not been in and I'm trying to figure out why this place is different from the other. You know, every Walmart's laid out different. Okay. It just makes it confusing as hell for you if you live in the, in the area. I guess I, <clears throat> I guess it is what it is. Okay, so anyway, once again, thanks, man. Appreciate you sending this. I really do. You know, we got we got it in, and uh, I'm looking forward to getting in here and seeing what it's in there. Uh, I imagine there, there'll be a few of the PDFs that, like I said, there's a couple that I've spotted. I don't believe I have. 
Uh, the, trick, the trick is going back and making sure, because I don't want to waste the resources I have available for printing these things out. Because, you know, something ha happens at my job if, if my boss decides to quit and retire or croaks. You know, his wife and then they joke about it all the time. It's, it's kind of morbid. It really gets to you after a while, too, you know. I'm trying to just keep my head above the, above the water, and they're already talking about sinking the boat, you know. And I'm like, should I really just stay here? Do you really think I should just wait until you sink the boat, and then I should go then go find another job? Or, when comes the point where I need to stop and, and actually make that leap? Part, I'm, I'm going to acknowledge I'm scared to do that. I, I, you know, I don't like the risk. It's so hard just to keep everything's going right now, but there's still a risk, and there's a risk here too, right? So anyway, I'm going to get off into another tangent for an hour, and i got other videos to do, and I'm still tired as I'll get out. So like I said, appreciate it, and y'all that send me the, these things, and there's been about a dozen so far in uh, individual and large batches, it doesn't matter. It's the, the fact that you do, and uh, each piece of, uh, is a missing piece of the puzzle I may not have. Uh, and I do read them, I do look at them. Uh, I may not always have time to understand everything I'm reading, uh, but I do try to do that. And then I share uh, what I think, my opinion, uh, for what it's worth and or not on the channel. And uh, sometimes, as you know, my, some of my videos are better than others, and some of them are hit or miss, and so on and so forth. And that is the way it goes. Till next time, I'm Rick. You're not. Have yourself a great weekend. Great. So now that we don't have a thing on the